Hello and hi, and welcome to me rambling about my comic for 20 minutes. If you don't know me, my name is Hannah Smith, and I have been working on a comic called Immortal for the last year or so. And I've been documenting my process on my channel, as well as kind of trying to make videos that might help other writers or at least be a little bit relatable. If you are returning to the channel, you will notice that this is a little bit of a different format than what I usually do. I usually am a lot more structured in the way that I make the videos. Videos, I normally use a script and I normally don't ramble but good news this is all I'm gonna be doing for this video is rambling and talking about Immortal as a little treat for myself because the video that I'm working on is taking a lot longer than what I expected so in order to buy myself a little bit more time uh, this video is going to be a speed paint documenting my process into finding a style for Immortal and finding something that really works with the feeling of of the overall comic and approaching it in you know my own special way which is flailing everywhere and not knowing exactly what I'm doing until the very end which you'll find out shortly so let's get started with the video so to start off with I wanted to kind of cover the different lines uh, the line art that I tend to use um, at the very top you can see the sketchy pencil lines which I tend to use for most of my works if not all of them and I actually actually got that brush from a, another YouTuber, um, <laughs> a, a real YouTuber, uh, called Trent Kaniyuga, who does concept art on his channel and he uses a very uh, a specific set of brushes that he made himself and he sells these brushes in packs and so I really love the pencil so I got the entire packs just for the pencil um, but it also has a lot of other brushes that are very nice. The second one I used is just the hard general brush that just comes with Photoshop. It's one of the pre-made brushes and the third one is very similar to the pencil brush it's almost exactly the same in every way except it doesn't have that texture to it that makes it a pencil so it is pretty much just like a grease brush that you find in blender anyway so I actually really predominantly wanted to play just with the pencil brush um, again it's the one that I use the most often and it's the one that I just really love for immortal and so I wanted to see if I could find a way to just use the pencil brush and to give to create the comic in a way that it would look in place and moving on from there I actually wanted to look into comic versus realistic styles and I kind of had an idea of where I was going on in this direction anyways I tend to lean very cartoony in a lot of my art and you can definitely see that if you look anywhere else in my channel um, just with my shorts and my other videos it's very cartoony most of the time but the thing about cartoony is that it tends to kind of draw away from the realism and not always but in instances where it does it does tend to have a more realistic feeling to it for example um, <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender has a somewhat realistic style just in the shape of the proportions are very realistic and the faces especially like the eyes are a bit too big but they are reasonably sized it's not extremely stylized and that allows it to have serious moments and serious drama within the story and so I wanted to kind of approach it where I could have this level of cartoony but also a little bit of realism and the reason I have such a problem with realism is that it is very hard to draw for me personally because I'm not very good at realism I have some uh, I actually started learning to draw with anime and <laughs> um learning how to draw using manga as references and as a result of it um it took me years to kind of unlearn that because I just I'm I suck at anatomy just in general and proportions as well are kind of difficult for me to consistently pull off um I'm getting a lot better at it and it's something I'm actively working on at the moment but it is something that I need to pay attention to especially when it comes to comics because there's a lot of art that goes into comics and it has to be something that I can create consistently and somewhat easily which also ties into the cartoon versus realism so the style that I ended up not really finding because this is kind of just a reenactment of stuff I already know this is um, this is the style that you've probably seen already in a lot of my uh, in a lot of my previous videos it is somewhat cartoony but with more sharp lines to it that kind of give it a little bit more structure and a little bit more uh, it makes it a little bit more certain in its design and then there's still these kind of stylized proportions and very large eyes that are taken from the cartoony side of it which is a little bit tricky because I am trying to be very realistic with the rest of a mortal I'm trying to kind of reach a 
very high level of realism in the world building and the social structures and the styles and it's a very interesting thing to have this kind of cartoony style matched with that like hyper not hyper realism but kind of matched with this like amount of work that kind of goes into realism and making the story realistic but then having a very cartoony style anyways moving on for the first image i just wanted to kind of throw stuff at a wall and see what stuck um if you've seen my uh I think I called it writing a comic, setting a comic 40,000 years ago. Uh, at the very end of the video, if you haven't seen it, I put a lot of comic panels in it and a lot of kind of like, uh, I'd call it concept art, just for the general story. And I actually had a bit of a problem with those panels where they were very, very clean. I think I still use the pencil brush, but it still came out looking very clean uh, just because I actually used a lot of gradients and I used very clean colors for it. So the colors were very flat. And then in order to make them less flat, I used gradients and I think that actually ended up making it look a bit too clean and so the purpose of this exercise here <laughs> was me attempting to kind of move out of that cleanness and kind of try and get this textured papery feeling to the image without you know actually drawing on paper yeah and um, I tried to put a lot of detail into the ephemerals especially um, which is what I've been calling kind of the jewelry on her the ephemerals are kind of plot relevant, um, but they mostly add to just the aesthetic of the characters as well. So again, that's going to be a huge problem for the actual comic because now I'm going to have to draw all these little details and remember exactly which ones follow from each panel, you know, and, and pay attention to the continuity there, which I am not really looking forward to but you know it's gonna be a fun challenge at, um a fun challenge at the very least the leg warmers especially i kind of screwed up with back leg um where you can kind of see the leg warmers don't make sense because you can see them at the top of the leg and at the bottom of the leg and i don't know what i was thinking there um <laughs> Yeah, so once I got the line art done, then I had to fill the silhouette in and that was something I had a huge amount of trouble going into Photoshop because I, uh, before Photoshop, I was actually working on Clip Studio Paint and it has a much nicer way of kind of, uh, I don't know, I remember it being a lot easier to just work with Clip Studio Paint when it came to coloring. But then once I kind of figured out, okay, now you use layer masks and you use clipping masks, then that's, um, it made it a lot easier. Um, but it just, it was a little bit of a learning curve there that I really didn't figure out for way too long. And then, then the next step, of course, was to add flat colors. And I actually really wanted to look a little bit more into color theory and kind of working like with two colors moving upwards, something like yellow or blue. The main color scheme that I want to end up using for Tala is purple and gold, and that's for plot reasons. Um, but that's something that I think I'll have to experiment with next time. And actually that could be another video. Anyway, after flat colors, the shading of course was next. Um, the way that I kind of do shading is that I do a, um, on a separate layer, I draw the shading out and then I actually convert it into color which is a bit of a tricky process that I, I can't really explain in full here but it's um fairly simple and I think you could actually get a very similar result just by um, changing the effects to an overlay just for the single layer um, but I do it I do it in an annoying way so that I can go back and change colors if I need to and that's just by yeah turning it all into separate layer masks um, uh, the shading doesn't have any gradients to it as well um, again because of what I said earlier about the gradients being a little bit complex um, that I really wasn't aiming for but also using sharp lines for the shading adds to the cartoony look of it um, and here I actually did try and play a little bit with gradients again this was just an exercise and just throwing things at a wall and seeing what stuck so if there was a possible way for me to fix um, the gradients to make them look better it was here uh, and this was actually how I figured out I really love the color burn layer actually really nice for kind of deepening colors um, and then adding just that smidge more dimension to it anyway so now that I had kind of the rough idea and you can see there's a lot of problems in that are still present in this version where it's again a little bit too clean the gradients maybe add just a smidge too much to it although I did try to tone them down quite considerably um, and so moving on into the next image I wanted to see if I could 
fully pull off a very sketchy look that still looked clean and looked professional and would work for the entirety of the comic. Um, and you can actually see this is a very common pose that's used for people practicing anatomy because I am a person practicing anatomy. And so I was kind of pulling double duty here where I was also kind of trying to see if I could get the proportions and the feel right to it. And I don't know if you can, but you can kind of see the action line there that I was kind of trying to go for. Uh, interestingly enough, this was actually supposed to be the first line art that you're seeing here. Uh, was going to be like the proper inking and halfway through I actually changed my mind and decided to let this be another rough layer so that I could attempt to make the official line art like the proper line art a lot more stylized because I wanted to see if I could make a nice mix between pencil lines and color and I wanted to see if I could make the line art a part of the aesthetic and make it stylized enough that it added to the image instead of it just being a, a tool in order to just be able to visually identify what's going on. Um, and then you also, you couldn't really see her face very well, so I added in an extra little uh, her face again in that same style just to see if I could get the eyes right because the eyes would definitely would have to change. And, and you can see here they are actually a little bit smaller than what I was um, hoping for and I don't think I fix it with this one but with the next image I, I do try to make them a little bit larger and a little bit more cartoony because I, I I do love drawing eyes it's my favorite part of the entire process kind of is just drawing eyes and kind of getting that that uh, shading and the different colors and then the, the the highlights always are my favorite bit to add and here you can see the proper line art is a lot messier and the thing with digital art is that you often try and close the line art because you're often working with full tools and you're working with um, maybe like an inverse fold tool and so like in order to do that you have to close all the lines you know and so you actually are aiming for very very clean lines that all close up and are all very neat so that you can just use a full bucket use an expansion and then just kind of forget about it and here I actually went in the complete opposite direction which I think is going to come back and bite me maybe for when I'm doing this kind of on a larger scale but I absolutely adored how it ended up where the line art is a lot more stylized and it's a lot more empty and looser and you can especially see that in the feathers in her hair um you can see here i'm trying to do the fill tool <laughs> and it didn't exactly work it just worked on the arm um and so the rest kind of has to be done by hand which again i think might come back to bite me at the end of the day but it's cool it's fine it's all for the sake of aesthetic so i am willing to live with that even though i know that future me will not be willing to live with that and then moving on with that we go into coloring and coloring it was exactly the same it's just flat colors and then done in the exact same way as the first image so it wasn't too important and then moving on with the shading this time instead of using just the solid general brush for the shading which is also something i did with the first image i used the pencil brush again and again i wanted to kind of see if i could add more texture to this and as i hope you'll be able to see later it really paid off because it actually does add, it does add a hell of a lot to it and you can actually see here i did end up adding a little bit of a gradient to it i again i just i keep trying to get gradients to work <laughs> Because they really do add some really nice dimensions to an image that make it feel more real and make it pop a lot nicer. So if there was any way for me to get it to work, then that would have been nice. And then I actually extended some of the shading to have quite a bit of it be just a solid black in the corners. And again, this was to add more dimension to it, make it a little, a little less flat. And I actually think it really added to the style because again, the line weight ended up being kind of a very important part of the style. And so to have this very heavy section just in the shading allowed to kind of let the rest of it feel a lot more um, lighter which really ended up working well in the long run and you can see I um, I completely forgot the markings um, on Tyler's face uh, until the last minute and I keep doing that it's it's impossible for me to not <laughs> it seems it's um it's very like half the time it's definitely an afterthought and I think there are times where I just completely forgot to do it entirely. Moving on from here I actually wanted to try and see if I could work the style to be again just as good for the simple stuff and then just as it was for the more complex stuff and this was kind of again an exercise in seeing if I could pull off serious and simple and like very doodly kind of look for just those quick like background panels or reaction panels and then see if I could still pull off those very dramatic full page images that are just, that are meant to carry narrative weight to them to be able to pull off 
both sides of the spectrum is something that the style is definitely going to have to do. And so this was um, my attempt at trying to kind of test the waters and see if it worked out. And you can see the complex image is, it gave me a lot of trouble, that complex image. I redrew it multiple times. And I think even while I was doing the final like uh, the final line art for it I was still changing things and you'll see that uh, you'll see that later where I just I had a lot of trouble just being able to draw her face in that exact pose um, and the entire time I was drawing it I just kept thinking this is very discount Aaron Yeager <laughs> Yeah, and then again, we move on to the second kind of rough layer, which is a lot neater, but still not the final layer, which is nice. And it actually really is nice for the ephemerals as well, because I kind of get to just be very gestural, like kind of just gesture towards the idea of them instead of drawing the exact details for them right every single time. And I think as long as I get the colors and the general shape of them there, then it can still look possible and it's still something I'm gonna have to test but hopefully that's kind of what it can do and a uh, fun fact about the ephemerals um, they <laughs> uh, Tala is actually in a point in time where they don't have the technology to make beads um, where potentially they could make beads if they had like uh, if they were like maybe molding like clay on a stick and then like pulling the stick pulling it off the stick like theoretically but as far as we know historically there actually isn't any um, evidence of like beadwork or stuff like that um, until much much later in like human humanity's timeline um, so all of these ephemerals have to like I kind of have to like avoid drawing beads and beadwork because they didn't have the technology to bore holes into stones yet so it's like any Anything that they do find that they do add to the ephemerals have to be like naturally bored holes so it's like okay well you have to have like seashells that that you know you find washed up on shore that have holes in them or like they're piercing holes through like wood or they're like hollow reeds um, and it's all kind of held together with like these um, uh, sinew strings and another thing about the markings that I put on the hands and arms and on the faces specifically of Tala and eventually the rest of Tala's family is that they are actually protective symbols uh, if you've heard me talk about the wild god before then you probably know what they are it's just uh, the symbol for the wild god is just a circle and it's kind of to represent the whole and the everything and so to place these symbols on the body especially on limbs is supposed to help during hunts to help just in everyday life because it's supposed to be protection and so it's something that I kind of just included in most of the images here just because they, they're fun little uh, aesthetic details that you can kind of add that they're not too taxing on the overall process but then they do do a lot to add detail to the image and then you can see I'm moving on back into the coloring phase and the coloring phase is very much the same as it always is mm. and so the coloring especially for these simple panels is going to be quite quite neutral so it's going to be very realistic but then for the more dramatic panels that's really where I want the color theory to come through and I was going for I was actually thinking of a very like very blue tones for her but I did a very stupid thing and I did it all on the same layer for all three of the images which I shouldn't have done because then I could have messed around with proper shading and gradients and stuff and I didn't really want to do it with gradients because this is something that I want to be able to do again and be able to repeat the process and so if I like mess around with the blueprints to the point where I have to make a whole new blueprint um, when I come back to this later then it kind of defeats the purpose so I kind of just had to <laughs> I just kind of left it as it was and you can see I'm still kind of messing with Tala's face a little bit but it looks a lot nicer now that I can put in proper shading and kind of fix the hair and the make it look a lot more give it a lot more volume and, and make it a lot more dynamic looking with the shading I finally remember to do the markings again and here I think they really look amazing especially if I'm able to keep that kind of sketchiness to them and kind of make them like just do them in the pen uh, in the pencil brush and just keep that kind of rough look to it especially in the complex image. I tried to play a little bit with gradients and here I can really show the difference between the simple medium and complex where the simple just had the one color burn which was put down very very low I think it was actually it was like 15 uh, percent opacity just for that color burn just to give it just the slightest little bit more dynamic shading to it, give it a little bit more dimensions and <laughs> forgot the markings again so I had to redo them here. For the medium image I actually tried to do shading 2.0 if that makes sense where it's just it was shading and then I put it on a I believe it was a multiply uh, a multiply effect layer. The idea 
idea behind this was that it was going to add again like more blue toning and just and because it's not a gradient it's just solid color it would hopefully fit in a lot better with the style and I think it did I think it worked out quite nicely and then and then I immediately added another color burn gradient to it as well which is nice because now we're building up on the different styles we're building up on the same style and seeing like what I can get away with and what I can do and what can add more to it without breaking the boundaries of the style <clears throat> and here I added the same multiply blue layer onto the complex image as well as the same color burn layer and then at the very end I added I added a highlight and I'm actually not very happy with the highlight that I added because it was um it actually ended up being a little bit flat and I think if I had done it slightly differently where I added a little bit more onto the fur and gave it like a little bit like you could if you could see properly where the color was coming from and if it was maybe not white if it was maybe more of a yellow it could have looked a lot better and a lot more interesting but that's something I'm gonna have to try for next time yeah and so that's basically what I've got so far just in terms of just in terms of that style this is actually one one of the very few times that I've looked at the style of something that I've done and I feel like I love it more every time I look at it um, especially the stretching image of Tala because that was just the first attempt and it is definitely one of the better first attempts I've ever done yeah so it was a very interesting exercise and something that I actually had a lot of fun doing uh, I've never done a voiceover for something like this before where it is it's kind of terrifying because I I really like like my scripts I really like my scripts I like having something to kind of fall back on um, when I don't know what to say because I'm sure you've heard a lot of ums and ahs here I actually really like these kinds of videos that they don't have a lot of structure there it's just you listening to someone talk and then they tell you about their laugh and it's a I love stuff like that I especially like sims building videos that are like that um, if that's relatable to anyone but it's not something I'm sure I can pull off myself um, but anyways the next video is actually hopefully it's going to be about the lithic industry and I'm drawing um, a lot more panels for it than I've ever done for any of my other of my other videos previously um, most of it is actually told through drawn doodles and panels that I've drawn myself instead of a bunch of images that I find online which is making the creation part of it a lot longer but hopefully it'll shorten out the editing part and then I'll be able to get it to you guys in maybe two or three weeks uh, don't want to really say a deadline because if Every time I set a deadline for myself, I run longer than what I was hoping to. Yeah, anyways, if you really like the sound of Immortal, if you like what I'm kind of rambling about, I do have a Patreon. The lowest tier is for a dollar a month and you get a shout out at the end of every long form YouTube video. And then for five dollars a month, you actually get early access to all of my videos by about a week. Also, it lets me kind of work on Immortal. It lets me devote a little bit more time to it as well, because at the moment I'm actually not a big enough channel to benefit from the partnership program. So this really would help it really really would anyways thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you next time